Okay, so I'm going to take you through the, the um, development of this sketch for the submarine. And you'll see here um, a list of um, steps. So I began by just setting up the code to read three channels. And once I had that working and I tested it all, I saved it as the next one and then went from there. So it was just a way of making sure that it's a bit like climbing a mountain. I, every, every step was covered and on a couple of occasions I had to go back because I made mistakes. But if we look at the first one, this is really the initial one. I actually wrote over this. It's a little bit more complicated than just an initial step. I'll try and centralize that on the page. Shall I or not? No, it can stay the way it is. Hmm. And what you can see here is I've got two libraries, pin change into int and servo, and it's all about reading the um, receiver. So I'm reading three channels out of the receiver. One is for the ballast, another is for the routine. That's going to be the diving and surfacing routine and it connects to a three-way switch on the transmitter. And this is the snapshot and that is also a three-way switch. One way is a snapshot, you've got neutral and the other way throws the boat into um, auto, which you will get to in time. And I've just made some notes here about where they come from. I've also added to this, just as the extra component of this, is um, pins to control the relays, which will control the one piston I'm running from this. So piston dive pin is 6, piston surface pin is 7. The rest of this code is all about reading the RC. When you get into the void setup, it's all about reading the RC, but I've also declared that the piston dive pin and the piston surface pin is an output. When we get into the loop, this is once again basic material about reading the um, uh, RC. This is the section where I gradually build, and you'll see a list of these growing, um, the serial print line components. And what I do with these is I use them all the time. And I'll upload this so that, for example, I can then look at the unsnapshot in component and it'll, it'll show you the numbers rolling through and how to uh, therefore control um, and you you know you, I do that all the time just to test that it's all working and this is the code right here that I've written and I'm saying that if unballast in is less than 1390 then make the surface pin high else if unballast in is greater than 1390 make it low so this is um, just a simple way of making that arm turn the um, piston on or off. The rest of this uh, material is all about, um, once again, reading the RC. It's this long, fairly long piece of um, code. And I'm now going to intersperse other components in as we go. So that's the end of the very first one. Um, the second one is identical, It's because I overwrote the first one, but now with the sensor test, this is now I'm trying to read the distance sensors. So this is a totally separate piece of code that uh, I got through Adafruit. Um, I need these two libraries, and it's the VL6180X um, distance sensor. So I just use this to... Uh, to test the reading process and it does that very nicely and this little um, integer down here called range is in fact the figure that you want that that is the figure that shows you in millimeters the distance and if you load this and you wire it all up correctly you'll see the range now what I then did was stripped this back so that all I was using was the very bare minimum in order to be able to read the range and then move to the next step of adding this to my code. Here we go. So now you can see I've added the libraries. Um, I've added the, the little Adafruit statement there about the distance sensor 
Everything else is much the same. What I've also added are two integers, outer limit and inner limit. I'm only running one piston at the moment. And naturally enough, one is the outer limit of the piston, the other is the inner limit. Very simple. Now I've also added this block of code here, um, which has some integers in it, but also it has in it um, the code which enables me to average out the readings of the distance. And what this is doing at the moment, you've seen this before, is every reading of the distance, it's adding up 40 of them, then dividing by 40 to give an average. So if we roll down here, everything else, this is also part of the averaging code. Uh, this is um, obviously starting up the distance sensor. And as we roll along here, everything else is pretty much pretty much the same. Um, let me look. This is the averaging code. As we go on, I neaten this up. I'm just testing it. But here I've added some extra code, which is um, if unroutine is greater than 1800, and this is the use of the uh, three-way switch to cause a dive routine to be started, then turn dive, make dive routine equal to 1 or naught. If it's less, make surface routine equal to 1 or naught. Now, if the average distance, which is the, the distance that the sensor is reading but averaged out, is greater than the sweet spot, if the distance measured by the sensor is higher than the sweet spot. Now this sweet spot idea is, you'll see this up here, these are some new integers that I created. This is all about um, recording where neutral buoyancy actually is. So where were we here? If average distance is greater than sweet spot, then let inner sweet equal 1 or inner sweet or else let it equal naught. I'm playing with these names, just having fun. And if inner sweep is equal to 1 and dive routine is equal to 1, then let dive sweep equal 1. So, I do the same thing here, but when we get to the code that really matters, this is the interesting part here, it's saying if unballast in is greater than that particular number, in other words, like it was before, we're going to turn the piston on, and inner limits equal to 1, then we're going to turn the piston on. Now, the, um, there's something I need to explain here first, but what that's meaning is, if unballast in is greater than that, turn it on, but are we within the, the appropriate distance, the appropriate range? And if so, it'll work. If not, it won't. So it's saying if unballast in is greater than that and inner limit is equal to 1, turn it on. Or if dive suite's equal to 1, which is the diving routine, then turn it on. Now you'll notice here that there's a difference from the original, from that first script. And this is actually, I don't know, I, I must have changed the original script, but low is turning the uh, relay on and high is turning the relay off. You find that with most of these relay things. Now that little bit dive suite is equal to 1 is based on, where can I find this? So what I've said in here is that um, if inner suite and dive routine are equal to 1 then let this dive suite, now it, this is just to complicate things, this, this is the same thing but not using just one integer. So if unballast in is less than 1390 and the outer limit is equal to 1, in other words, yes, I'm within, the, I'm within the moving range of the piston, or if surface routine is equal to 1 and outer limit is equal to 1, same thing, that's the surfacing routine, then turn this on or off. Now, this is the, fi this is the other thing. Now, this is the snapshot knob. It's saying that if it's greater than 1600, then sweet spot will be equal to the average distance. In other words, it's going to take a snapshot and sweet spot will suddenly equal this average distance. So you'll see that, that's how it operates. Um, that's it, and that's the end of all of that.
isn't it? Yes, everything else is about reading the Rx. So we save this and move to the next one. The next one is me attempting to read more than one distance sensor. Now, this was not an easy process to go through. Um, I had to go onto a forum and ask for help with this. And what we're using here is this TCAA DDR uh, multiplexer unit so that we can read from uh, both of the distance sensors at the same time. And the way that works is fairly simple. Now I've also added to this little bit of code because I also want to use all three sensors here. I want to read from the pressure sensor as well. So I've said that the input for the pressure sensor will be A3. And then I've set up the averaging code now for each of the distance sensors and it's a lot neater that you can you can see here and I'm also using a um, hundred times I, I mean this is quite quite a lot it takes a while for it to wind up to this probably a couple of seconds but that's all and now I'm calling it s number readings meaning stern number readings that's for the stern sensor and b number readings for the bow sensor so I've now added two um, and this uh, bit of code here is all about reading these sensors. I've just, I've just added, so I've got S this reading and B this reading and blah blah blah, just to, just to get another one working. Uh, w pressure is analog read A3, so that's um, obviously reading the uh, water pressure. And here we are, I'm printing out, if you were to print this out, you would be looking at the stern average distance, the bow average distance, and the water pressure, and you can see it all working. And this is the code that assists that um, averaging process, much more neatly done here. What I take now is all of this and drop it into the next, and drop it into our code here. So here we are. This is the um, this is the code, and I've now added um, all of that sensor material. But I've stripped it of everything else, so I don't have the instructions in here at all about you know the the unballast stuff. I'm not interested in that right now. I'm just interested in getting all of this to work together. So as you can see, all of this is much the same. We go down here, we've got the unballast in for the various components. I've got the dive and surface pin, blah, blah, blah. We run down here. You can see all of this is the same. It's still uh, working with one piston. I'm still, now I'm reading the, the water pressure. We've got all of that. And that's it. That's all there is to this one. But now what I'm going to do is put the other functions in so that we can, so this is add sensor stripped and rebuilt. This is quite a complicated, this was quite a process. I think I broke it and had to go back to the start on this, but here we go. Now I've added here another library and it's the EEPROM library. I'll explain that as we go along. So let's just go down uh, what there is here. This is the averaging um, code. I've now got the... I now no longer have just the sweet spot. I have the S sweet spot, meaning the stern one. Um, I, I haven't put the bow stuff in yet, but I'm just differentiating now so that I can do that more easily. So I've put S's in next to everything. Got the same thing. I've now got the um, stern piston dive pin the stern piston surface pin, I've added the bow piston and the bow piston surface and I've got the stern outer limit and the stern inner limit so I've added all of that ready to, to continue to expand it all. Now we get down to the uh, pin modes so now I've got four pins as you can see that are outputs and I'm going to come back to this little bit of code because I'll explain that in a minute so um, reading the water pressure, I've got the um, averaging code in here um, and now I've put back in 
the um, uh, the directive code, if you like, to from so that we can start to make things make things happen. So we've got the dive routine, surface routine, S in a suite, S. You know, all of that is. I'm just getting it all working so that I can then multiply it. So everything else is basically the same until you get to this. And that's saying that this unsnapshot in is greater than 1600. And you remember this, sweet spots equal to the average distance. What we're now going to do is we're going to write that number to the EEPROM. And that's the um, internal memory on the chip. Um, so that when I turn the when I turn the Arduino off, and I go back to it, it will remember these distance that particular distance. And in the setup here, one of the things that happens is that sweet spot goes to the EEPROM and reads the last reading. So whenever I use the chip, it'll remember the last place it was at. Okay, there we have that. Now the next thing. I did was added the second piston. I did more than that actually here. I also added the trim, I think. So once I got the previous one working and saved, I then took this the, the next step. And as you go through this, you will see now I've got um, S dive suite, I've got B dive suite, I've got um, Everything now is is actually duplicated, but what you will also see, I think, is I've added the trim in pin. Now that is from channel 5 of the transmitter, and I've added that right through the code, um, because I want to be able to now control the pistons differently with the trim. That's all I've done, I think, with this one, is just added it and tested it. So as we scroll down, um, I'm now reading the stern and the bow sweet spots, and they're going into the EEPROM. And then, and then, and then, you can see this is this line is growing at the moment. I'm, I'm I want to watch the uh, die the, the bow sweet spot on the on the uh, monitor. And here we have. Um, now the same code but now multiplied so it's got the the two pistons running together and here we have uh, the unballast in this is all the same this is stern piston stern piston dive stern piston surface now bow piston dive bow piston dive bow surface surface and i've got the sweet spots now writing both to the eprom that's all there is on that one. Next step was to add the trim. Now I've already added the uh, input for the trim, but now I want to add the control. Let me just check this is all the same. Oh no, I've done that. Let me move to the... that, that was copied over, that was exactly the same as the previous one. So now I'm adding the trim controls, and what that is, is at level 304. I've added, so if unballast in is less than 1390 and S inner suite is equal to 1, turn that on, or if dive suite is equal to 1, turn it on, or if untrim in is greater than 1800, now you'll see that untrim in is mixed uh, out, of, out of phase, which means that when I flick this switch, I'm going to get a different response. So one's going to dive and the other's going to surface. Pretty straightforward, really. Um, took me a little while to fiddle, f figure that out. But in fact, that, as soon as I got that working, I thought, great, save it, let's move on to the next step. Now we add the dive routines. Okay, 
We've already got the switches for the dive routines, but now I'm going to add this. And if we go down to level 315 or line 315, you will see the magic bit of code here. Okay, now we've got something completely different happening here. What I want to do is make sure that when I use the um, uh, the 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 in this case the diving routine and the stern piston uh, goes turns on I want it to be delayed and the way I've done that is by without using a delay um, uh, command because that stuffs the rest of your code up I've used this bit of code here which talks about the stern piston dive timer now you can copy this straight off this this works brilliantly it just stops everything and right at the end of the code it turns the timer back to naught. So basically uh, there's this bit of code here if I go back up to 12 I think it's I think it's up here this is the uh, the place where I put the um, time it so I'm delaying the stern piston dive by two seconds now I can change that as I want to whatever extra time I want in relation to the dive. The second thing, where's the, where's the next bit of code that fits with this? Mm. I've got 12, I've got 42, 42... Yeah, I've got that. 125. Ah, this is it. The stern piston timer millies. That's just declaring them uh, in the setup process. So that little bit of code will enable you to uh, delay um, a, a, a function. So that gives me the surface routine and the dive routine so that the surface piston comes up, the bow piston comes up first and the same in the stern. Okay, so that's all there was on this one I think. Oh, I've done that, sorry. Yes, that's another double. That was another one that was written over. The final thing that I did with this now was to add the pressure gauge. And there's a few little bits of code that I need to take you through in relation to this. Uh, the first one is um, depth error. Now what this little function is, um, is it tells me the difference between the depth that the snapshot has recorded and the actual depth. And that error, either plus or minus, I feed into the, practically directly, into the servo, and that will allow me to control the servo. Okay, now what else do I want? Ah, here we are. Now, the hydro out pin, I've added that, so I've connected the servo, um, which is the bow servo, or the sail servo, to pin A2. But I've also created another one, and I've called it hydro dead pin. I don't know if there's an easier way of doing this, but it means that I can direct, it, direct the information to a dead end, if I want to. And you'll see how that works in a moment or two. Let's go to 86. Oh yes, I've added the servo hydro, the output to the hydro, you can see that. 139. I've added the um, pressure sweet spot to the EEPROM reading process, you can see that. 
152. What's the next one? Ah, yes. Now, the W pressure. This is the pressure that comes in from the pressure gauge. Is a number between 0 and... What is it? 1,028, I think it is. In order to be read by the EEPROM, it needs to be between 0 and 255. So I'm simply dividing this by 4. Otherwise, I can't... I can't uh, remember it. it. Can't. It won't fit into the EEPROM. One of those other little things that I had to discover. Uh, Three ninety-two. Where are we here? Ah, oh, yes. Now this is very nice here. So we've got the the depth error is. The is the pressure sweet spot minus W pressure. You can you can imagine that. that under, that's fairly self-explanatory. I've got if the snapshot is um, triggered, I will also remember W pressure, and it will go into um, the third spot in the EEPROM memory, of which there are, what, 500? Can't remember. Anyway, if unsnapshot in is less than 1,200, then what I'm going to do, this is actually putting the boat into auto control, I'm going to attach the servo to hydro out pin. So suddenly the servo is going to come alive and I'm going to write to it 90 degrees plus depth error times 10. Now this little 10 here, I can change that as I go on. That's, that's the L angle of attack of the, of the um, servo no, that, of, of the hydro and I might need to change that but for now that's fine and then I wait for 15 seconds and then if unsnapshot in is greater not 15 seconds 15 milliseconds I'm not sure I even need that delay I might take it out but if unsnapshot in is greater in other words I flick the switch back the other way out of auto the hydro will continue to attach, but it will write 90, which is dead level, then it will wait 10 milliseconds, and then it will attach to hydro dead pin. So what will happen is that the hydroplane will center and turn off. It's not getting any more information. That worked really well, and I think I need to get rid of that delay, but we'll find out about that. And I have to say, that's nearly it. The final thing that I did was a quick rewire. Uh, I did the circuit diagram and realized that some of the wires were a bit awkward, so I reassigned them in this one, cleaned it up a bit, and, um, and the circuit diagram basically fits this program. That's it. See ya.